Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray you're having a wonderful day. I pray that you're walking in the blessings of the Lord, and I pray that you are as excited as I am about what is going to take place tonight, because tonight we are going to have, check this out, Bible study. <laughs> Right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, yours truly, I'm in town and I'm so excited about what God is giving me to do. So now listen, listen, uh, I want to speak to you about something because today's uh, presentation is somewhat uh, historic because this is the last offering of, of this kind when we come to you from this office from my office uh, before the vote in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, as we are running for the general board. As you know, I am a candidate, and uh, uh, somewhere around November the, 4th, the 12th, uh, the, the vote will take place. And uh, when we leave, the Lord willing, for Memphis, the first of next week, we will be there uh, throughout the duration. Now we will be coming to you again uh, next week, but we will we will broadcast or we will come to you uh, from a location in Memphis, Tennessee. So here I am today in my office at home, excited about what God is doing. There's a passage of scripture that I want to read to you today. Uh, and uh, I won't preach about this tonight, but I want to read this to you because I want you to know where my heart and where my mind is. It comes from James chapter number four and verse 13. James says this, James, the servant of our Lord, the half brother of our Lord. James says, go to now. He says, uh, 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 listen up. Or he says, get this. King James says, go to now, comma, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get and get gain. He says, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little while and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, for this reason, because our lives, our lives here, saints, our sojourn, James says, is just a, a puff of smoke and we're gone. James says, for that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or do that. If the Lord will, we shall live or do this or do that. But now ye rejoice in your boasting, in your arrogance. He's rebuking them. All such rejoicing is evil. It is pretentious because you don't know. You, none of us knows. So next week, we intend to go to Memphis, Tennessee. Next week, I, we, that will be, if everything goes according to the will of God, an election. Uh, and, and God will decide, and you will decide, but mainly the Lord will decide, I want your vote, I want your prayers, I want your support, but I want you to know where my heart and my mind is. I'm putting my heart, my mind, and my mind in the hands of the Lord. Throughout my entire life, no one has done a greater job of managing my life, managing my career, managing my family, managing my finances, managing my health, managing all aspects of my life, my marriage, my, uh, uh, my family, like the Lord has. And every time I listen to God, I get it right. And, and my friends, on those occasions when I didn't listen to him, <laughs> I failed miserably. So I've learned to allow the God of the Bible to manage all of my affairs. So he knows now whether when I broadcast from here again, I will broadcast as a member of the general board if he allows me to live, or he knows that I will, uh, I will broadcast as a member as I am now 
of the body of Christ. Now, here's what I want the Lord to know, and I want you to know where my heart and my mind is. Whether I am a member of the general board or a member of the body of Christ, I'm going to be a member of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. I'm going to stay with Jesus. And if Jesus lets me live and Jesus allows this uh, room to stand, if Jesus allows the church to be as it is today, when we come back to, to speak to you from this place, I can tell you this. I will speak to you whether I'm a member of the general board or not. I will be saved. Uh, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and have Jesus in my heart and, st and still be running for my life serving the God of the Bible. Now, my friends, don't let uh, these words cause you to believe that, I've, uh, that I don't want to win because I do. Uh, by nature, I am a competitor and uh, God has blessed me to put together a tremendous team and we have worked. We have worked. We have uh, uh, have not treated this like this is something that we're entitled to, but that we need to earn the vote and the support of the people and you delegates out there who are watching. I pray that I have earned your uh, uh, a vote and your support. I pray that you have seen in me enough that would cause you to say, I think he would be an asset to the general board of the church of God in Christ. I certainly uh, 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 don't want to be a liability to the church. And I pray that you have not seen anything in me that would lead you to believe that I would be liable to the church, but that I would be an asset to the church if uh, elected to the general board. We are there to assist the presiding bishop. Uh, I have proven, I think, uh, that I am a team player. For the last four years, I've served uh, with the men's ministry with my friend Bishop Golden, a strong man of God, a mighty man of God, and we have worked together only to make the men's ministry of the church of God in Christ better. And God has blessed us to hit a home run and we're excited about that. So uh, here, we, here I am. Here I am. Uh, I was thinking about it coming in today and I said, Lord, the next time I broadcast from this place, should you let me live? My status will be different and my status will be the same. It will be different in that I may be a part of the general board. It will be the same in that whether I'm on the board or not, I will be saved, serving the Lord, fired up for Jesus, preaching the word of the Lord. My friends, in this campaign, I have had, uh, I have gotten uh, advice from various quarters, and I've heard many, many times, Bishop Wooden, please don't change. And I've heard many say to me, Wooden, you need to change. Don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. Just lighten up on this. Lighten up on that. Well, what we've done is that we've remained the same. Our theme is wooden solid. And that is, you know, you can't be solid and be wish-washy at the same time. You can't be solid and vacillate. No, we stand where we stand. You've seen some of the things recently that have been online uh, concerning uh, various preachers and comments that they've made about uh, that, uh, uh, without calling his name, about our presiding bishop, about our church, about the church of God of Christ, this and that, all these things have gone on. Well, listen, I've already spoken to these things. I've already said to you, if not one time, I've said a thousand times that I believe our church is a holiness church that God has strategically placed the church of God in Christ in a position to make an impact on society in these last days. God has given the theme to our presiding bishop to give to the church. We have work to do, but you know what? I've also said, but we must do the work. 
We must make the stand. Now, my friends, you know that I have for the last 20 years or more fought for the lives of the unborn, fought for the biblical definition of marriage. I believe that God made the human race male and female. And I don't believe that any politician, any person, white, black, male or female has the right to strive. According to Isaiah, you, we, have, we do not have the right to strive with our maker. We are who God made us to be. And anyone who strives with his maker is on a fool's errand because the Bible is right. Hallelujah. The song comes to mind. The, I know the Bible is right. The, the late great G.E. Patterson gave it to us and, and somebody's wrong. So let me tell you, I'm staying with the Bible. The Bible is right. And we're going to stand on the word of God. Let us continue to pray for our nation. Oh, the presidential elections will take place uh, the first of next week. And uh, that's in the hands of the Lord. God knows. And uh, you've seen people endorse people. You've seen people uh, uh, tell you who they're for and all that kind of stuff. Well, the IRS told me I couldn't do that. So what I've decided to do is to obey the law. Uh, I got pulled one time. Uh, by a, p a patrolman, and I had a fantastic argument, Brother Garrett, that I just knew was going to keep me out of a ticket. And you know what I told that patrolman? I said, listen, man, I'm just flowing with the traffic. The, 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 there were other people going faster than me, so I know you're not going to give me a ticket. <laughs> Needless to say, I got the ticket because he said, you know, uh, I'm pulling you because of what you did. And so uh, I have stayed out of it. Uh, the, the IRS has told me that uh, certain things I couldn't say, certain names I couldn't call during the election season. Now, I must admit, I have noticed the unequal, the very unequal, the mighty unequal application of our laws. I've seen people standing in their pulpits, standing in church, doing the very things in their pulpits where the 501c3 status is uh, uh, applies in the pulpit at service endorsing candidates, bringing candidates to their church, walking them in, letting them speak, not allowing room for the, their, their opponents, doing it till they were satisfied. And uh, uh, you know, maybe the IRS has contacted them. If they have, the people kept it a secret, but they sure came after me and told me I couldn't do any of that. And listen, 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 I decided, look, you, you can't fight them and win. You know, I, I got a little joke. The question is, how much do you owe the IRS? The answer is the amount they tell you that you owe them. <laughs> and, uh, and so you need to, you, that's just the way it is. So what I decided to do was just obey the law. And, and I encourage the members, I'm going a little long, but I've encouraged the members to look at the party platform, both parties platform, look at what they are for. And don't just look at the platforms to find good. See if there's anything in either platform that promotes evil. No believer under any circumstance should vote for the promotion of evil. If you're promoting evil, there is not, there's not enough good that is out there to atone for the promotion of evil. Have you not, not read what the Bible teaches? That a little leaven, a little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump. I think the party platform and what a politician tells you they're for tells us more about how that particular politician will behave than anything else. We can go back in the past. We can go back in the, the past. Uh, uh, and God knows with both of them that we have out now, there's enough in their past to bring up and to talk about till the cows come home. But what I, what I, what, what I want to know, what I'm paying attention to is what they're telling me, what they're saying that they're going to do and what the party platform uh, suggest that they will do. And with this election, both candidates have a track record. 
whether it was the last four or the previous four. Study it. Look at it. Pay attention to it and cast your vote. What I do hope, though, is that you don't participate. I do encourage the members not to participate in identity politics. Don't vote for someone because they're black. Don't vote for someone because they're white. Don't vote for someone because they're Indian. Don't vote for someone because they're all of them. Uh, don't vote for someone because uh, they're male or female. Uh, uh, that kind of a thing. Pay attention to the issues. You must consider the character of each candidate. You must look at these things. And on top of all of that, when you get through, pray and then cast your vote. What you can't do and uh, is set, set, set it out and not participate, because if you don't participate, you don't have a right to complain. So I'm getting off of that. I just want to say I want you to pray for me. Uh, I, I'm excited. Uh, uh, I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I don't know how the vote will come out. All I know is I have given it my best and uh, I'm putting it, now I'm leaving the rest in the hands of the Lord. We have some interesting things scheduled once we get to Memphis uh, to uh, attract people and to give people, to call people to give us a second look. The one thing I could not do though, I could not morph and become someone that I am not. I could not all of a sudden not have anything to say about the unborn. I couldn't all of a sudden not have anything to say about wickedness and sin and ungodliness. No, 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 no. If I would have changed like that, that would be a good reason for you to say, you know what? He's not who I thought he was. Uh, amen. He's not the man that I thought he was. See, you got to stand. There are some things that should matter more than anything else. And that thing that matters more than anything else must be God's truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the morals of the Bible, our Judeo-Christian ethic, the Judeo-Christian concept. And we will continue to preach it with power and authority, believing God to uh, perform his will. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, pray uh, uh, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that's what we're looking forward to. I believe that God's going to do it. And uh, I want to uh, invite everyone to join me tonight. I've been contacted by Al Jazeera Television. They want to come tonight and and uh and, 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 and tape a, po a portion of the service and they want to do an interview with yours truly. I'm glad to sit down and talk to them. I don't have anything, uh, to hide. Uh, uh, we, 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 uh, people seek, uh, our thoughts and opinions on various things, uh, uh, quite often. And we're only too happy to share because I come from, I, and I don't, I don't fool them. When you talk to Patrick Wooden, you're going to get the biblical perspective. Well, you're going to get a biblical worldview. And I'm amazed at the number of born again people who can quickly say, well, let's just take the Bible out of it for a minute, or let's take the religious part out of it, out of a conversation, and let's look at it from that point of view. Well, if you take that part out, you take me out. I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher of the gospel. I was somewhere one time and they were questioning me and Gary, I got to go. I got to go. I, got, I think this is the second I got to go. They were questioning me and they wanted me to answer some questions, but they said, answer them without the Bible. You keep saying the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says. And you know what, my friends, I discovered something. I discovered two things. Number one, they were right. I did keep saying the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says. And number two, I discovered that without the Bible, I didn't have an answer because I have given myself to this book and I believe, I believe that this book speaks to every situation in life. This book is more modern than tomorrow morning's newspaper. There is nothing like the word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word will never fail. So I want to invite you tonight to come praise the Lord. <laughs>
<laughs> to meet me here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> yeah, we still get excited around here on studying the scripture. Yeah, a drum roll to study the scripture. We're not having a concert. We're not bringing in special guests. We're not having a great big musical thing at this time. No, we're having Bible study. And we're going to teach the word of God. And the Lord's going to bless us real good. I'll see you tonight.